Hello, good morning. Um, I'll just say a few words because I think that it's always best to uh, uh, leave the artist uh, talk about his work. And uh, I just want to uh, thank you for your interest. Thank you for being here for these one and a half days that we are spending together to discuss different strands that are running through, through the exhibition. And uh, it's a great pleasure for me to introduce uh, Alan. Alan was uh, one of the first artists I met. I think it's kind of my very first visit, like after I accepted the appointment, my very first uh, curatorial visit to Ireland. I met uh, Alan in, uh, in Dublin. And uh, it is always, I mean, as a curator, I'm always so grateful to the knowledge of artists and how they share this knowledge. And uh, in the case of Alan, it was particularly uh, letting me know and kind of educating me about the story of Roger Casement and of course his, uh, the biography that he had in within the uh, 1916 struggle and, uh, and particularly his, uh, his entire work in Africa and how it resonates to all the discussions and all the ideas that I was developing back then uh, for, the, for the exhibition. So Alan was really instrumental in the beginning of the forming of my curatorial project uh, for, for EVA International and I'm absolutely uh, uh, happy that this film could be could be made. We, we I tried to, to help as much as possible in the beginning and, uh, and uh, it is a, a wonderful thing that uh, we can see today. So I will not really read any bio, I mean most of you here we are in a kind of very local situation, know this uh, uh, great man, and uh, I think that uh, Alan would want to say a few words about, uh, about the film before the screening. Thank you. Thanks, Gordon. And I just want to thank you, Eva, for um, the opportunity to show the film down here. It's, uh, it's actually still uh, on exhibit in Dublin in the Hugh Lane Dublin City Gallery until October. Um, so I'm just going to uh, read a short bit of the some of the press information, just, just a short statement because it's actually got a complicated story and I tend to get it muddled up if I just go off the top of my head. So um, so what this uh, this film is, is part of a, an installation in the Hugh Lane and it, it, it's concerned with the legacy of Roger Casement who was one of the leaders of the rebellion in 1916. Um, now I'm not going to go into all the ins and outs of Roger Casement because we we're kind of a sort of Easter Rising fatigue in terms of information, but um, bear with me for a moment. Um, so this project seeks to actually uh, circumvent the usual commemoration tactics by fictionalizing alternatives and shifting timelines while navigating historical and revisionist assessments of casement. Recent writing contrasts him as a naive nationalist or flawed gay icon, an imperialist champion of human rights or self-accepting humanitarian. Um, the history of Roger Casement is much contested and filled with many of the contradictions that surround the entire 1916 commemoration project itself. Um, the film was commissioned through the Dumb City Gallery of the Hugh Lane and it is in, was made in response to an exhibition uh, that runs through October as well called High Trees and Roger Casement which is centred around the Sir John Laverley monumental painting depicting the last day of the appeal trial against the sentence uh, of death for treason before five judges of the Court of, of Criminal Appeal in London. So, um, what was essentially a show trial nevertheless produced several complex legal arguments, an iconic conviction speech by the defendant, and a fall from grace that was kept secret for many decades after. The 30 minute film um, imagines a, a different future for Roger Casement had he not been executed in 1916. It is set 25 years later in 1941, where Casement is in exile in Norway, um, now living with his former manservant, man, or living with his former manservant and now partner, Alder Christensen. They are visited by Alice Stafford Green, who was a close friend of Casement at the time and involved with him in the uh, Congo Reform Association and was one of the sort of people who sparked his interest in, in Irish nationalism, apparently. Um, the story unfolds um, as Adler and Alice both betray their relationships with him, paralleling the isolation of Casement from his homeland, um, his beliefs and the ideals of the Easter Rising. The film is, is uh, deliberately counterfactual in that it reflects the subjectivity common with the genre of historical drama film or indeed any historical interpretation. 
in that much of the scholarship, or sorry, much of the scholarship surrounding Casement is similarly muddled with subjective romanticism, political prejudices, and still even an inverted homophobia that cannot come to terms with the personal and public lives of Casement. Several of these angles are woven into the story, albeit misrepresented, unexplained, and ambiguous. Our kind gets its title from the iconic speech Casement made on his conviction, and extracts of the speech are used in the film and in the adjacent installation in the Hugh Lane. Similarly, the dialogue uh, re-narrativizes uh, the English subtitles from a film and is not openly credited um, in the installation, but the, it, it's, the, the dialogue comes from the English subtitles from the German made-for-TV 1985 film by Michael Haneke called Verwar Edgar Allen. Which, um, uh, anyway, the, the, instead of restage, or instead of the restaging of the text and dialogue, um, sorry, instead the restaging of the text and the dialogue drawn from these two sources creates a whole new story. This allows for the work to embrace a, the complex history and presents a challenge to audiences who need to read between the lines to understand how fact and fiction have now merged. For me, this work better reflects the possible unforeseen consequences of the rising rather than recreating or reenacting an idea of what that history was or is believed to have been. So the film actually embraces the apparatus of cinema in lots of different ways, so the art direction um, and the camera work, it's stylized like a 1940s melodrama, very mannered acting, very particular lighting and scene composition, and it has, it's sort of somewhat indebted to my own background in photography, as the, all the shots are static, the camera never moves, and it was shot in lockdown in County Wicklow and Hard Danger Ford in Norway. So, roll it there, Colette. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 